Hello everyone, this is a bit of a long one. Uh, this is a very involved project, so there's lots of steps, but I'm really excited about it. I uh, I know I've mentioned it before, but I've been taking this a class, this encaustic class that's about a year long and it has a bunch of different instructors with tons of different classes and it's called Painting with Fire. They're actually doing it again next year, so if you have a chance to sign up for it and you're at all interested in learning encaustic techniques, I would highly recommend it. It's amazing. But I've been listening to some of the classes, and there was one in particular by Amanda Jolly, who is a fabulous encaustic artist. She uses these rice papers to absorb her extra wax, and then she uses them, she, she folds them in unique ways, and then she uses them to collage with in her paintings. And she was the inspiration for this particular experiment. I have always been interested in scrapbooking and paper crafting. Um, in fact, you can see some of my other mixed media projects on this channel. I'm adding more and more all the time. But um, it's something I'm always really interested in exploring is how to kind of combine encaustic painting with paper crafting and scrapbooking. And I'm always kind of looking for different ways that I can do that. So after Amanda Jolly's class, I immediately thought of experimenting with an encaustic junk journal. I've never really made a junk journal before. I've found a few art books, but not really like a junk journal. And I thought this was a perfect opportunity for me to kind of give it a try, but do it with these encaustic techniques and use all encaustic uh, to create this book. So that's what I'm doing. I'm using leftover wax. And in some cases, I'm adding a little extra dry pigment to kind of add a little bit of extra color to the wax and to the papers, but I'm essentially using extra wax to to wax up these rice papers to be able to use them in my book. And that's the first step. I'm making sure that they're completely saturated, both sides, and in some cases using those powders just to kind of add a little pop of color in some places. Haven't really done this before. It's kind of fun experimenting with with different things. But after taking the class, you know, knowing that that I have a basis for what I'm doing. You have to be really careful, obviously, because you're working on a hot griddle. So I'm using paper towel to move the wax around and make sure um, the entire paper is saturated. And it protects my hands while also um, absorbing any extra wax that, that uh, it comes in contact with. Okay, so now I have uh, 10 papers, and now I'm folding them in different ways. The folding kind of breaks up the wax in, along those lines, and you can create you know, unique geometric patterns or different things. Amanda Jolly actually does a lot of cool origami pieces with hers, and I'm not, I'm not that into paper folding, so I'm just kind of making some random folds here and there just to kind of create some some interesting patterns without thinking too much about it.
Okay, so all the papers are folded and creased and crinkled in different ways. So now I'm adding some, some ink. I have a lot of different colors of India ink and I'm kind of adding them to the paper in different ways to kind of soak into those creases and into those folds to add some different color and to make those lines stand out a little bit more. It also tints the paper too. I wipe it off a lot of the excess um, ink so it, it's you know it's not completely saturated after I wipe it down but um, but it still kind of tints the paper too and and doesn't just uh, seep into the cracks. So it's kind of a fun way to add some extra color to uh, these pages. Of course, I'm making a huge mess on my table, but you know, that's what you do. And you can kind of see where the ink is is has leaked into those um, into those folds and creases and colored it. The wax protects the paper really well, but in those folds you can you can get a little bit of that color that seeps into it. I don't really have a theme for this book. Um, it's kind of just developing organically because I'm using extra wax and some of that wax had, was already colored. So I've got some pinks and some blues and some browns that that's colored the paper just because of that extra wax. And so I'm kind of using that as a basis for what color of inks to add. So after it's all said and done, I end up with, with 10 pieces of rice paper that are, they're all pretty different and there's greens and pinks and, and blues and browns and uh, just kind of all over the spectrum. I think uh, for the next book that I do, because I would really like to do this again, I think I might make them all match. Like maybe do uh, like one specific color, one or two specific colors, or maybe a black and white I think would be fun. This was a different way of adding the ink. I, I put it onto the, the foil instead of directly onto the paper and just kind of dabbed it in. And I didn't really wipe this one off either. I just kind of left the ink kind of where it was and let it stain the paper however it was applied to it.
All right, so these are all my papers, waxed, stained, inked. Now I'm ready to create some signatures, or at least the beginning of signatures. I'm going to be adding um, additional uh, kind of things to it to make it more of a junk journal. So I've got some printed tissue paper uh, that has a lot of text and stuff on it. I'll, I'm going to be waxing up some fabric and adding that to it as well. So it has not just these waxed rice papers, but other waxed things as well that I'm going to be adding to the pages. This is a longer shot because I wanted to show you all the different papers and what they looked like. There's a lot of different ways that you can that you can do this. And it's really fun kind of experimenting with the, the different ways to fold the paper, to add the ink, to tint the pages. It was it was really fun. It was a blast. All right, so I have to cut these down as with the these are you know just folded single sheets of rice paper so I have to cut them into multiple sheets that'll be put into my signatures trying to make it so I don't have the same page next to each other or similar colors next to each other. So trying to make it as random as I can. So all told, I ended up with four signatures. Now it's time to work on some of the extra pieces I'm going to be adding to those signatures, just to kind of junk it up a little bit. I got it a little too high temperature. You can see how it's smoking a little bit. You don't want that. so. If you ever see that, just turn the temperature on your griddle down.
Now these are just little squares of muslin that I've torn because I like the torn edges of things, especially fabric. And it's much easier to just rip fabric than to try and cut it. They tear really well. Muslin does. Any kind of cotton fabric tears really well and you can get a really neat squares and rectangles that are aren't crooked or anything when you tear it. Okay, so all the extra pieces are waxed. Now I'm just kind of tearing them into pieces that'll fit into the book. I'm also gonna be using some of these pieces for the cover. And these extra pieces, I'll just leave in there uh, as they are. I'm going to stamp on some of them. I might paint a little bit on some of them or, or journal a little bit. There's, there's a lot of different things that I, that I could do in, into these pages. And I'm actually really excited. That'll be a separate video, me decorating the pages. But I'm trying to make sure I get all the pieces in that I want to be bound in uh, to the signatures before I bind it into the cover. I'm going to go back later on and add some of those pieces back that um, that aren't going to be bound but kind of stuck to the pages because I'll probably stitch a few of those pieces in as well. But the ones that I didn't actually bind into the signatures, I'll have to go back and add later. I was just kind of messing around here. I had to take them out before I bound it because they were just, it was too much to worry about you know, poking holes and binding the the pages with all those loose pieces kind of falling out, so.
I like to have rough edges a lot. So when, when a little bit of the fabric or a little bit of the tissue wrap or something is sticking out of the, the edges, it doesn't really bother me that much. I kind of like having some extra pieces kind of sticking out. Excuse my head here. So this is just some chipboard that I'm going to be using for the covers. It's paper as well, so I'll be saturating it with wax, but it's a lot thicker, so it it won't warp or anything when I add the wax or extra things to it. I'm sanding the edges just to kind of hide any uh, crooked cuts or anything like that to make them all uniform. All right, and this is uh, another batch of extra wax that I just had that I had scraped from some old paintings that I had redone. And all of the wax that I use has other things in it. Like when I scrape a painting, it usually has oil paint, extra oil paint, or uh, shellac, or something like that in it. So I'll get, in these, in these leftover pieces, I'll get some of that within the wax. And so it will stick to, it's, it, it sticks to the chipboard and to the paper. Kind of adds a little extra interest. But sometimes it can be... Uh, at least with this project um, on the covers, it was it was a little um, it was cool at first, but it became a little bit of a problem later on. I'll explain it when we get to that point. All right, so you can see on these pieces the there's like little blue flakes. Those blue flakes are actually kind of sticking out of the wax a little bit. So it's adding a lot of texture to the top, which is which I really liked at first. But when I go to glue the the fabric and paper that I use to kind of bind this cover together, it I think it um made it so it, the glue didn't work very well. There is, uh, and I just discovered this product. It's called Sarah Colors Waterborne Wax Paint. And they have not only colors of paint that you can actually paint with on encaustic, that's water-based, but they have gel medium and different um, mediums that you can use to texturize that paint. And it kind of blew my mind. I've never heard of anything that's, that's water-based that, also has wax in it that you can use with encaustic, but that's exactly what this is. You can use it in a sense like like gel medium for mixed media projects, which I always use as a glue. So what I'm going to be doing to put the cover together is I've got these chipboard pieces and I'm going to be covering them with kind of a collage of paper, waxed paper and waxed fabric, and gluing them down with this gel medium. 
Now, it doesn't work exactly like mixed media gel medium, though, acrylic gel medium. It, uh, you have to weight it down while it dries, like really, really good weight it down. And I think having those little flakes on the surface of the chipboard made it so it didn't adhere as well. So while it did stick, <clears throat> and I was able to get the cover to stay together, it's not as tight as I would like it to be, or as I believe that it could be. And so the next time I do this, I'm going to try a few things to make sure that I, I get a, a good adherence. Is I'm going to have a thicker layer of wax, because all these pieces are completely saturated, but but I, I, I want a thicker, smoother layer of wax for the gel medium to adhere to. And I will weight it down significantly so that uh, I make sure that it gets a good latch. I don't think latch is the right word, but you know what I mean. So I created a template with paper and I'm just using that to poke holes not only in the spine of my cover but into all of the signatures as well just so I make sure that they're all in the same place and to keep my book as straight as possible. If you want a tutorial on, on this kind of bookbinding technique, I used um, a specific YouTube video that I will link into the description so you guys can find it and watch it if you want uh, some good instruction on how to do this exact kind of binding. So this is the gel medium I was talking about before. I think I also put it down a little too thick. I don't think, because with acrylic medium, like the thicker the better, right? Um, but with this, I think I, I, you just need a thin application and then weight it down is a better technique to be able to do this. For some reason, originally I was just going to do the fabric and the paper on the front, but as I was working, I realized, you know, do it on both sides and <laughs> then you'll have some interest on the inside of the cover as well and you'll have double the strength uh, holding the, the chipboard together. So again, I used, I believe I used too much gel medium there. But next time I'll do it. I'll do it correctly. So this is the the other side of the cover. Just kind of gluing the pieces down. All right, so this was after a couple of days of leaving it to dry. This is me. I was trying to see if the the heat would help it to stick better, because um, it's it's sticking, but I'm able to peel it up really easily. Uh, so I thought maybe the heat would help, but I mean it didn't make it worse, but it didn't really help either.
All right, the last step in creating the book itself is binding the signatures into the cover. And like I said, I'll put the tutorial that I used for this in the description so you guys can find it if you want detailed instruction on how to do this. But it's actually really, really easy. It was tricky to do the binding with all the extra little pieces added. But it's worth it, I think. All right, and this is the almost finished piece. So the next video I'll do will be me decorating and strengthening the cover. I'm gonna add some stitches through those uh, pieces of paper and fabric and stitch into the chipboard to make sure that the cover doesn't ever come apart. Uh, and then the third video will be me decorating the pages, doing stamps and things like that uh, to make it a real interesting book. And I just, I love it. I love this piece so much. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you stuck with me through the whole thing, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you get notifications when I do my next parts of this project. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks.